Hello and welcome to Bunbury Church Online in this special 30-minute service from Bluebell Woods, where we hope you will experience something of God's great love for you and the whole world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's sing our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So let's say the following prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a collect for today, risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now a reading from Matthew's Gospel, the parable of the weeds amongst the wheat. Jesus put before them another parable the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. When the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Those of you familiar with the Narnia series by C.S. Lewis probably remember how in the book The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, four children mysteriously travel through a wardrobe. They grab for the fur coats that were hanging in the wardrobe and wrap themselves up in them. Because in this new land, it's the dead of winter. As they travel, they discover that it has been winter here for a long, long time. Always winter never Christmas. Now I don't know about you but this year I found spring unusually awkward. One day it's been beautiful and you can start to feel the warmth of the sun but the next day like today you feel as if you made a mistake by putting your winter coat away as the rain and chill creeps back in. It's been to me a picture of the kind of times we're living in but it's also been teaching me something to do with Easter. So let me see if I can share with you what I'm getting at. Jesus' disciples and his very first listeners, the Jewish people, had a particular idea of what seasons looked like. And they saw themselves as being in the season of winter. In winter, other nations and powers ruled over them. In winter, they were separated from God. In winter, there is death and tears and pain people take advantage of others and get away with it. People get sick and don't get better. But the Jewish people also believe that summer would come. In summer, God would show himself to be the one who has all the power and everyone would see it. In summer, those who had died would be brought back to life. In summer, God would defeat his enemies and no one would be able to stand in the way of his totally renewing of the whole world. There wouldn't be any more death or tears or pain. There wouldn't be any injustice or sickness. God would totally be in charge and there would be no longer anything that would separate his people from him. And this summer season would never end. This understanding of the seasons is one reason why there was so much confusion surrounding Jesus. If Jesus was who his disciples thought he was and who he said he was, how come it wasn't summer? Why wasn't Jesus bringing Rome to its knees to show that God is the one who really has the power? Why wasn't his work more complete? And as Jesus journeyed to the cross, why did he allow himself to be mocked, to be humiliated? Surely, when the disciples placed Jesus in the tomb, they saw in his death, their death of their own hopes, that summer had come in him and that they re remained without question in the dead of winter. 
No one expected Jesus to come back to life. It didn't make sense of their vision of the seasons. Jesus' resurrection is like a red rose or a bluebell blooming in the snow or strawberries ripe for the picking in February at minus seven. It's the inbreaking of summer in the dead of winter. Can you imagine that? Going out into your garden in February and finding ripe red strawberries. Jesus' resurrection is just as unexpected, unbelievable, joyful, but also unsettling. So what does it mean? Part of what Jesus' resurrection means is that a whole new season has begun that no one had anticipated. It's spring. Remember that in Jesus' day, the Jewish people understood history as moving from winter, when sin and death and the enemy reign, directly to summer, when God will reign and the enemy is totally defeated. But when Jesus rises from the dead right in the middle of history, instead of at the end, it was the start of this new season that no one had imagined, this springtime that we continue to live in today. Jesus' resurrection is the first sign that from now on, things are different. Summer is breaking in and winter can't stop it. Narnia fans might remember a few key signs, point to the fact that the white witch's reign of winter was doomed. Snow was melting. The children were getting hot in their fur coats and took them off. And once all this begins, there is no turning back. Jesus' resurrection means that from now on, history is moving in a different direction. Summer is coming. Come spring, you start to think about things differently. You start thinking and acting more and more like summer. Even though it's still too cold outside, you might start planting some seeds in the house in anticipation of planting them in your garden. You might tune up your bike and think about where you're going to go for a ride. You put away the winter clothes. You do things knowing that summer is coming. And Jesus' resurrection invites the same kind of heart and mind shift. Knowing that we're in this new age, this new season, we'll all be one in Christ. We aim to move in the direction now by doing the hard work of forgiveness or by including someone who may be feeling left out knowing that in this new season, there won't be any injustice. We aim to move in that direction now by standing alongside those who've been mistreated or misunderstood, or by sharing our resources of kindness, time or money with those in need. We act differently in the spring because summer is coming and winter is not coming back. And yet spring is this strange in-between season. It's not winter, it's not summer. It's kind of both at the same time. And it can be confusing. Like I said, one day it may be warm enough for a t-shirt. The next day you may be reaching for your winter coat. Winter and summer exist together at the same time. Jesus talks about two ages existing together. When he tells the story of a farmer in today's reading from Matthew, who planted good seeds in his field. While everyone is asleep, the enemy comes and plants weeds amongst the seeds. And when the wheat sprouted, the weeds also appear. And the farmer allows both to grow together so as not to rip out any of the wheat by accident. They both grow together until the harvest. Jesus warns us not to be surprised to see both the power of darkness and his own healing power alongside each other in this season. Jesus also uses the picture of yeast working through dough or a mustard seed eventually becoming the biggest tree in the garden. To describe the season we are in now, there is something hidden about God's power at work in these times. That's why Jesus points to them. He doesn't want us to miss them or what they might mean. Just like right now, we need to look closely at the branches of the trees to see whether there are any buds. We can't see where the seeds are doing underneath the service. We have to point out the signs of spring to each other or else we might miss them. Pointing out these things to each other is an extremely important springtime practice. Otherwise, it's very easy to despair and believe that winter will actually last forever. As Jesus followers, in this springtime, it's important to point out to each other the things we see God doing the new life he's growing, 
We need to tell each other stories of hard hearts being softened, of forgiveness being offered, of dreams and visions God gives us, or of good God causing good to come out of something intended for bad. In this confusing time where both winter and summer exist together, we need to keep pointing out to each other even the smallest signs of spring, hidden as they may be, to keep our hearts rooted in the reality of the new life that's begun. So, welcome to spring, this sometimes confusing, sometimes joyful in-between season. We rejoice in it, point out its signs to one another and live and trust in it, that winter's power truly is gone, that summer is coming, and in the meantime, that new life has already begun. Amen. Now for a musical interlude, and John Rutter's I Believe in Springtime. I'm delighted Kev Yates is going to lead us in our prayers. Hey church, how's it going? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus willingly laid down his life to pay for our sin. And that because of that, we can be restored into fellowship with you. Keep us mindful of things that deceive and distract us. And take our focus away from you, the one true shepherd. Keep us alert, discerning and steadfast in our following of you. Just as a goalie puts on protective gloves, we will guard ourselves with the protection you have given us in your word. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sandals of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Father, we will pray continuously. Lord, just as you know each of our names, help us to be in fellowship with our neighbors. 
colleagues and those in, the, in our world. Give us time to seek them out, to learn their names and how we can come alongside them and show your love. Give us courage to speak your word and show people you are the truth and the light and that there is no other that can restore, heal and save. That you are the answer. We thank you for loving us so completely. God, we pray for our community. Help us to work together, to support each other, encourage each other and build each other up. Help us to make this world a place where the lonely are wrapped in family, the lost are given hope. Almighty Father, we pray for those living in and fleeing from conflict around the world. We pray your peace over Ukraine and Sudan and for all the other parts of the world where struggle reigns over harmony. Lord, we pray your all-powerful protection in those areas. Raise up and open doors for wise leaders who will usher in a new season of peace. Lord, we pray for all who have been displaced. Surround them with family. Help us to know how to help them. Give us open arms and generous hearts. We pray for today's children and young people. Their world is full of voices. Lord, be with them and help us to share your word with them so that your voice speaks life into them and they know to follow you. The one, the only shepherd, the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. Jehovah Rohai, our shepherd, thank you for leading us and keeping us. Amen. Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Kevin Rubin, for those lovely prayers. So let's sing our final hymn, How Great Thou Art.
And so a final blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share your Easter faith. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love today and forevermore. Amen. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. No point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the very
Do I? 